In this video, let's talk about the future of service stations. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Public electric vehicle charging is often subject to quite a lot of ridicule, especially when we start talking about the motorway network. In a lot of service stations on the UK motorways, today you'll find one, maybe two charge points. They tend to be run by one operator in particular, who obviously they brought us the charging network on the motorways as we know now, and you can't take that away from them. But maintenance is definitely in decline, and a lot of people experience problems trying to charge on the motorway. And that leaves you hunting for a plan B, C, or D as you try to make your journey. It's far from ideal, is it? You're not going to get everybody driving electric if that's what you've got to put up with for the people that do need to pound the motorway all day at least. It's fantastic news then that there's a new player in the game and they're trying to bring this sort of service station like experience but with a much bigger EV focus. And that company is called, called GridServe. They're about to open their first site in Braintree in Essex. Now it's not on the motorway network but that's the first site they're bringing us. Now, Nobody's heard of me, so unfortunately I wasn't invited to their grand unveiling. But a, a tiny little EV-focused YouTube channel called Fully Charged was. And they've produced a fantastic video introducing the site and showing what they have to offer. And here's a little sneak peek. This is absolutely incredible. I never expected to see this. When I was first driving electric cars 10 years ago on fully charged, I never even imagined something like this. This, you can charge 36 cars on rapid chargers at this site. It's got incredible facilities. It's just off the scale amazing. Yes, that is the GridServe charging hub and this is fully charged. <laughs> Of course the link to the video is in the description. You might want to just quit watching this and go watch that. Fair enough. The legendary Robert Llewellyn will do a far better job of showing you what's going on than I will. So the link's in the description. Uh, watch it after this video anyway because it's a fantastic look. Very, very, very good video showing you what's coming there at this site in, in, in Braintree which is the first one that GridServe have launched. It's an absolute revelation what they're doing here. You've got 24 DC rapid chargers on site. 12 of them are 90 kilowatt, 12 of them are 350 kilowatt for stuff that can charge really fast like the Porsche Taycan and, and, and those kind of vehicles that, that really can make full, full use of that. The Teslas can make full use of that as well, some of them can, but then there's also six Tesla superchargers on site for the Teslas to exclusively use because they, you know, they're not open to all EVs. You've got to have a Tesla to charge on the supercharger network. There's six of those. There's six AC charging points too for stuff like the Renault Zoe, the earlier Zoe's, which can only charge on AC. So you've got 22 kilowatt charging for those. And I guess you have plug-in hybrids and stuff. They tend to charge on AC as well and charge a bit slower. So they can charge out of the way of the fast chargers that, or the rapid chargers, sorry, that people want to use, want to get going quickly. I mean, it's, it's just brilliant. It's, it's got to be the largest concentration of charging points I've seen in one location in the UK so far. Brilliant stuff. It's not just that though. The fact that it's powered by renewable energy. I mean, look at all the solar panels on the roof alone. That's going to go a long way, but they've also invested in solar farms and they're doing everything they can to make the energy that they use 100% renewable. There's no worries about burning coal here and, you know, base. The, the, this whole oh yeah you're you're just you're just driving on coal you know you might not have tailpipe emissions but the, the grid's so dirty that it's just coal but we don't have that here it, renewable energy is at the heart of what they're doing and it, it's just such a good concept now see on the face of it it's just like a service station you've got a coffee shop you've got somewhere you can grab something to eat you know I, I, you've got facilities you can use whilst your car's charging well it's not anything to write home about is it but it's a necessary thing that we all need. And it looks far better than a typical service station. Have you been to one recently? God, some of them are just awful, aren't they? But then I guess they are old and they've not had any money invested in them. 
But it's more than that. What I love about this business model that they seem to be presenting is that it's multifaceted. Yes, they'll be making money from the electric, from you paying to charge your car, and I'll touch on that in a minute. And they'll be making money from the rent on the shops, you know, the cost of coffee and those places they're going to be paying to be on site and, and grid serve as the landlord will be making money out of that. Brilliant. Probably not going to make you particularly rich though, is it? Uh, I, I can't imagine that this type of retail is particularly lucrative, especially at the moment. But they seem to have thought of that. They're not just relying on that. They've got multiple businesses or multiple service offerings all offering you a little bit of something that would be a good service to you as either a current EV owner or driver, so see they've got some offerings in home charging and that kind of stuff, or if you need an electric car, they'll lease you one. And not only that, but they'll lease you one with charging included. So when there's more of these sites, you can charge your car at them because you've had your car from them. And that's a really, really good offering. And I think they've this is how they're going to diversify, right? They're not going to just be worried about charging you to use the chargers or earning rent from their buildings. They're going to be making money by getting commission from finance companies by leasing your car or fitting a home charger at your house or fitting some charging points at your workplace. That's, that's clever, that's good. You don't see Welcome Break doing stuff like that, do you? There, it looks like they're going to be using some of their spare spaces like a car showroom so you can see what they have on offer. So you, the cars that they're going to lease, they'll have some demonstrators, they'll have some showroom cars so you can have a look, you can touch them, you can feel them, see what they're like, see what the boot space is like, all that kind of stuff you get at a car showroom, but EV focused and from people that can then sort you out with a good lease deal. I like that. I think that's clever. It's clever use of the space. And I noticed that they've also got like you know business facilities like meeting rooms you can hire and that kind of stuff if you look at their website. I think they've thought this through. I think they're, it's going to be more than just a service station. And I like that a lot. The charging seems to be wholly reasonable as well. 24 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, you might be looking at your home energy tariff and thinking, whoa, hang on, that's pretty expensive. But on the road, it's actually very reasonable. That's the rate that the Tesla supercharger network charges in the UK as well, funnily enough. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if they've, they've sort of decided that that's a, an acceptable place to be. If you look at a car like my MG ZS EV, if I charged it solely at GridServe, that would be costing me seven, eight pence a mile. I think that's pretty reasonable, and it certainly um, puts you in a better. It certainly puts you in a better place than some of the charging operators I featured in the past, like Instavolt, where you're like thirty-five pence. You know, that's a good bit more expensive, and then you start to compare to petrol or diesel running costs. Um, and then you're like, well, this doesn't really stack up. You know, it's almost as expensive, if not more expensive. Whereas they're managing to keep it at a level where people, I think, are not going to be offended by the price. And as I said in my previous videos, I'm, I don't think the prices charged by Instavolt, by Osprey, are particularly outrageous. I think if that's the price you need to pay to have access to decent infrastructure, then that's fine. But if you've got companies like GridServe that can come along and because of their heavy investment in renewables, and because of the amount of solar on site and because of the amount of other avenues that they can use to make money, they don't need to charge the air for the charging. And I think they're in a very good place. I think they're setting themselves up for these to be proper, good destinations that will be very, very useful to people on the road. And I definitely approve of that. I think it's great. I absolutely love the concept. And even though I think to actually to get there from here, I'd need to charge my car on the way to make it there to then charge my car and make some videos about it. I'm definitely going to try and go there in the new year so I can show you what it's all about firsthand. Um, just because I think it's such a great concept. And they're, they've got plans to open 99 more of these. They're going to, they've got plans to open 100 sites in total, at least in, in the sort of short to medium term. And it's, it's a massive goal. I think it's massively ambitious. But from what I've seen so far and the fact they've turned, you know, they've gone from the drawings that they published of the potential site in Braintree to what you've now seen in the, that video. And please do go and watch the fully charged video if you haven't already. That they, They've done exactly what they said they were going to do. And not only that, they've surprised everybody by offering charging at a lower rate than everybody was expecting them to. I think everybody that I've seen talking about this were expecting them to be in 30 pence plus uh, because of the, the massive amount of 
upfront capital cost there must be in doing this. You know, setting up these sites from scratch will not be cheap, but they've managed to do it and they, they definitely seem to have the right offering in place. But that's all we've got time for this time. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think it's great and I can't wait to see more of these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.